today's show the ups and downs of the coaching merry-go-round. Alex Keith grabs the biggest opportunity of his sporting life. And memories and medals, the state's football history. Hi everyone and welcome to The Crows Show, brought to you by Optus, I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith and Mark, you played under several coaches and would appreciate the unpredictable nature of the job. Well Alana, someone once said there are only two kinds of coaches, those that have been sacked and those who will be. Sure seems that way and we have been reminded yet again of the tenuous nature of coaching by the sacking of Brendan Bolton at Carlton. And the mid-season departure of Brad Scott at North Melbourne. Good afternoon. In breaking news, a crisis meeting is underway at Carlton. Nothing you can do about that as a coach. They don't tend to see the funny side of things, though. Coaches do that. Pressure to perform. Few jobs come with the same level of intense scrutiny and criticism experienced by a select group of men coaching AFL clubs. For the last four years I've run the Coaches Association and I had absolutely no idea of how relentless and stressful and how difficult the job is. None. John Longmire, for example, is a Sydney Swans coach, rightly observed that 90% of his work is off the field. And I can tell you that 10% is a big workload. A successful sports agent who represents a large number of coaches knows the challenges stretch beyond the coach's box. Because you talk to Pikey, you talk to any of them, it's, it's pretty horrendous on the family. And the, the, the comments and things you get written about individual coaches is, is just wrong. It's around the clock. It's 12 months of the year. The pressure on the, uh, the coaches' wives and their children, if they're old enough to know what's going on, is also unrelenting. So yeah, I've, I'm lost in admiration for the coaches and how they uh, keep fit, how they maintain a marriage, and how they've got the energy for the, particularly the players that aren't in their team is, is a real credit to them. Because you're, you're an AFL coach, it's not much fun. That's why they deserve everything, they get paid. It's horrendous. And the Coaches Association plays a crucial role in supporting them on their journey. When a coach gets sacked, we have a checklist. So the first thing we offer is uh, industrial relations support to make sure the contract's adhered to. And the next thing we offer is um, media assistance. The next thing we do is, uh, I suppose, emotional support. And that can be just as important for the family as, a, as it is for the individual coach. Of course, Mark, you filled in as senior coach when Neil Craig stood aside. What's the success rate of interim coaches? Well, initially everyone thinks the first week that they have a great win, but it hasn't always, or it's not always like that. I think if you look back over this century, there's been 13 interim coaches, and I think they've won their first game about five times. So not always as, as successful as what we've seen recently. And then longer term, I think Paul Ruse has won a premiership, Neil Craig coached for a long time. But apart from that, the success rate of the interim coaches coach going on to coach the club is not that great. What are the qualities of a good coach? Really it's about man management these days. I feel like the, the size of the coaching group, the size of the playing list, you've really got to be able to manage your time well and manage the coach as well. So I feel like there's been a, a shift. There was a time when the Scott brothers, Nathan Buckley, James Hurd, so those players recently out of the game stepped into coaching. Now it's the more mature coaches, the coaches that have been a long, around a long time and have great life experience. So on the whole then can coaching be a lifelong pursuit or do they like players really need a backup plan? Well I'd be suggesting a backup plan if I was going into coaching but I think nowadays the path to being a senior coach is a really long one where you're talking about probably a decade before you get the opportunity so by the time you are a senior coach you've been in the caper a fair while and then I guess it's up to you how successful you are but uh, always nice to have something going on in the background I would have thought Alana. Certainly not a job for the faint hearted thank you Mark. Well nothing excites coaches more than than when a player emerges from the fringes of the squad to claim a regular place in the senior team. And that's what Alex Keith has done this year in emphatic fashion. Originally recruited by the Suns 10 years ago, he instead pursued a cricket career before finally returning to football and the Crows in 2016. With the help of Revolution Roofing, Alex reflects on his sporting fortunes. It's a big, big kick. Has right through the middle. Yeah, I've really enjoyed being part of the team and, um, you know, trying to um, lock down a spot in that back six because, um, yeah, it's such a such a strong group and, um, you know, some some great players with Talia, Hardigan, you know, Smith, Laird, these sort of guys, Brown and, and Kelly as well. Keith outmarked a lot of them again. I'll tell you, well, he's gone. He stood at the back and marked it. 
Oh, I didn't put any real expectations on myself. It was, um, you know, the plan through the pre-season was to try and get some continuity in my training, and I think um, through that I've, I've been able to improve, um, you know, marginally and um, across most areas, and um, yeah, certainly, you know, build some resilience in my body. Oh, that's not a good sign, is it? The ice is out on the knee. You know, Tom's a great player, and we we can't wait to get him back. He's, um, you know, such a such a strong player for for his age and experience. He came into the side last year, and um, you know, was was one of the best few players in the team. Got a young puppy, so um, George, his name is, he, he keeps us pretty busy and um, my partner Laura, we, we spend a lot of time at the beach, we, we live in the western suburbs so uh, we really enjoy getting down to the beach and um, I'm doing a little bit of uni, a bit of um, finance stuff so um, yeah, trying to keep chipping away at that and um, be as studious as I, as I can be I suppose, which is a struggle at times but um, yeah, they're so, sort of some of the things that keep me busy. Alex has certainly grabbed the opportunity created by Tom Duday's injury. OK, after the break, can Don Pike maintain his unbeaten run against his next challenger? Yes, first game after the bye will certainly be a big test against competition leaders Geelong at the Cattery. Well, it's a fair bet that Dom Pike will find time in the week off for a round or two of golf. So what better way to get some early practice than a one-hole par three challenge against former head coach of the Australian cricket team, Tim Nielsen. With the help of Optus, let's see how they went. Hi guys, uh, welcome again to the Glenelg Golf Club for the Optus One Hole Challenge and I'm fortunate to be joined today by the Head of uh, High Performance at the SACA in Tim Nielsen. Welcome along Tim. Thanks Don. Thank you. Golfing wise, you, uh, you get out and play much on the links? I do, I'm a member at Royal Adelaide uh, so I play as regularly as I can. Um, probably at least once a week. All right, well today we got here at the 16th at Glenelg. We've got 110 metres in this par three. Um, into a fairly so slight breeze, shall we? <laughs> Ooh, she's a bit left and a bit high. A bit left, a bit high. Well, that'll work. That's practice at its best. Nice shot, mate. So, Tim, obviously uh, cricket career. What was, uh, what was the highlight of your cricket career? Uh, I was lucky enough to play in a winning Shield team, so a Premiership yep. side in our, in our lingo, mate. Yep. Um, that was 95, 96 and played with a lot of very good players through that era. Still, I know you've had Greg Blewett on this show and in the past and then he played in that team as well. And Darren Lean and these sort of guys, Jamie Siddons who now coaches our state team, so yep. we've got a, a lot of good mates and a lot of good memories from those periods, yeah. yeah. Then you went on to, to coach the Australian cricket team. What was the highlight in, in for you in terms of the coaching side of it? We had some really good success. We, When I first started coaching the team, it was a, a bit of a transitional period. The likes of, if you remember, after that 2006-07 Ashes series, yeah. uh, Langer and Warren and McGrath and a few of their mates all decided time was up. My first test as coach was Mitchell Johnson's first test as a player. So yeah, we okay. went through this period where we had a lot of young players coming in and finding their way through. Let's go and get we'll this done. see if we can finish this off. Yeah, yeah you've got a, you've got a little tight lie down there. Yeah, good luck with that. It's not hard enough. Take it away. Take it away. <laughs> Nicely played, mate. Thanks, mate. Well played. <laughs> well played. Thanks Three. for joining me, Tim. Hey, all the best uh, yeah, off all season. The best well, Nielsen is currently head coach at the Emerging Redbacks Academy. Now, a showdown is certainly a baptism of fire for any youngster making his AFL debut. But that's just how Ivan Maric started his career at the Crows in 2006. The big ruckman chalked up 77 games before moving to Richmond, where he played another 80. He's still at the Tigers as ruck coach, and that's where we caught up with him, all thanks to Flight Centre. He does well, backs himself in, can he kick a goal? In his first game of AFL, 
got many fond memories of playing at the Adelaide Crows. Some great wins. I think I won my only, fir my only final there against Essendon, but I think I really enjoyed playing in the showdowns against Port Adelaide, and um, my first game was against, actually against Ports. One of my best mates, Chris Knights, number 21. I was number 20, so we shared a locker next to each other, and there's a lot of old teammates, Nathan Van Berlo, Richard Douglas, Taylor Walker, still keep in contact with. I'm doing the ruck coaching here at Richmond and also player development and well-being, so they're a bit more of an off-field focus there. But and um, I'm really lucky because it's what I wanted to do. I'm loving helping guys develop their own game. Yeah, just being there as a sort of like a big brother um, off the field for the players. And I feel like a lot of the mistakes and decisions I made sort of defined who I am today. So, um, but it probably just to be open and, and try things and um, listen to, you know, your elders, older teammates and coaches and yeah, always be willing to learn. Well, the trade deal that sent marriage to Richmond also landed Tom Lynch at Adelaide. Still to come on The Crow Show, he might be club champion, but has Rory led Medi's match off the field? Welcome back. Brody Smith and Rory Laird have played together in the Crows' back line for seven years, shutting down some of the game's most dangerous forwards. Off the field, they're best mates and enjoy nothing more than sharing a good laugh. But how much does Smithers know about his buddy? With the help of Thomas Farms, let's find out. This week I'm joined by Rory Laird. Let's see how much you know about Laird Laird. Oh, it's hot in here. Righto. <coughs> Righto. Righto. Brody, I'll start, easy, uh, start pretty simple. Mum, Dad. Yep, Mel and Dean. Year I debuted in. Yeah, I was injured, so 2013. Yeah. As Bulldogs in the wet. Laid onto it. Well played. Well done. What draft pick was I? You didn't get drafted, you're a rookie. Uh, how many brothers and sisters? There's a lot of sisters. There's four. Yep. How many stepbrothers? None. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's it? No. That's all I have. It's not hard to see why those two get on. Now, the mid-season break is a good time to join as a free We Fly As One member. Go to the link weflyasone.afc.com.au and sign up to stay on top of all the latest club news. Adelaide Oval's football history goes back more than 140 years to when the original Adelaide Football Club played the first interstate game against St Kilda. If you want to learn more about the ground's footy heritage, there are now special tours focusing on Aussie rules. The Crows show joined McGarry medalist John Halbert on one of his tours. When the redeveloped Adelaide Oval opened five years ago, John Halbert was one of the first tour guides. But having spent 53 years actively involved in football, he saw the opportunity for others to share his passion. I then felt that it was important we have a football tour where people who really wanted to focus on football because they really loved the game, uh, could come and uh, really have a focus on that only. The tour recalls football's colourful history, including the record-breaking crowds that packed the Oval in the 60s when Sturt, led by Halbert, was so strong. There is it. John Halbert holding up the big trophy. He's waited a long time for that. And so has Jack Odie. He's coached many premiers, many sides that have gone down. The game's champions are celebrated in this tour highlight. For people of South Australia to have the opportunity to see all the McGarry medals except six of them uh, that have been going on since 1898, it, I think it's an incredible opportunity to show people that part of history. John says it's more important than ever to remember the state's football heritage. Once the AFL really took over football throughout Australia, it meant that local leagues like the Sandful 
were going to suffer and I felt it was absolutely essential that we retain the history of uh, the South Australian National Football League as it was known in those days because it's got a very lovely and wonderful history and, and I'm hoping that I can spark that sort of interest in the people who come to the tour. Were you actually playing today or were you just making up the number? The best thing was that we had John Halbert as the tour guide and he knows so much about the game and is such a legend. Well Mr Halbert, it was very special. Because um, I'm an old phys ed student and he was my lecturer many years ago and I, of course I know his history so it made it, it was icing on the chocolate cake. John Halbert won his McGarry medal back in 1961 after being runner up three times. A dining room at the Oval now carries his name. OK, if you want more South Australian sporting content, tune in to Footy Plus, hosted by Belinda Sloan. The show returns after the bye, immediately following our Friday night blockbuster against Geelong. Stay with us when we return the young man who's carried a huge load. he played his first game, Riley O'Brien had to wait four years to become an AFL regular. The injury to Sam Jacobs has provided the opportunity for Riley to press his claim to one day succeed Source as the club's number one ruckman. Thanks to Toyota Good for Footy, Riley looks back on a career shaped by his years at Melbourne's St Kevin's College, a school that's produced a succession of AFL players. Captain Selitas got it done. This man's just coming of age tonight, Riley O'Brien. Juniors, yes, I started playing when I was very young with my two older brothers at uh, Mooney Valley Footy Club, was my local club, which was great. Uh, had a lot of mates down there and spent a lot of time down there and some good memories, a couple of junior flags and that sort of thing. So that was awesome. I, I loved my time there and, and then went on to play uh, school footy uh, at St Kevin's from year seven um, through to year 12, and that was awesome as well. It was another um, great. It was a great part of my footy career and then uh, yeah, we went on to play for Colder Cannons and eventually came here. You didn't have heaps of interest in my probably my draft my draft year and then I went back as a 19 year old and didn't have heaps of interest again but Crows were probably the only club that were sort of showed interest and I didn't think there was much of a chance but got to uh, the rookie draft and lucky enough they um, took, a, took a chance on me which was great um, and then I've yeah, been here ever since for the last four or five years and it's yeah it's been great. But some athleticism, Riley O'Brien is well, in 2019, the Toyota Good for Footy raffle is now open with the aim of raising $1 million for grassroots clubs across Australia. Don't miss out and make sure your local club is involved. Register now at the website toyota.com.au forward slash AFL raffle and start raising some serious cash for your club. Toyota also rewards our crow in the crowd each week. This year, we're out among fans on Adelaide Oval's Southern Plaza, where we spotted you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm on Wednesday, have some photo ID to show and a merchandise pack will be yours. That's about all we have time for in today's show, brought to you by Optus. Now next week is one not to miss. We'll sit down with Don Pike and hear his take on the season so far. Remember to keep an eye on at The Crow Show on Twitter for all the latest news. Also check out the club's social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for your company and we look forward to joining you again next Sunday. At 11.30 on 7. We'll see you then. Bye for now.